So a number of years ago, I did a video on astronaut food. And what it was was a beef stew space dinner, primarily made up of freeze-dried components. And the thing that's funny about it is I sort of did it as kind of a joke, uh, because I usually do military rations. And the fact that this was uh, freeze-dried stuff, it seemed like it kind of went along with that. But it was something that was really geared more towards kids, this product. It wasn't real space food by any means. And it even said it on the packaging that it was similar to the kind of stuff that astronauts would get. I guess the idea was just like the uh, freeze-dried astronaut ice cream that you can buy at gift stores at science museums. Just the freeze-dried technology was something that had been used at some point in space flight for um, food for the astronauts. But anyway, I never really claimed that that uh, astronaut space dinner was uh, real space food. It was just something that I was able to find and I thought would make for an interesting video. The other interesting thing about that video is that despite the fact that I have done dozens and dozens of videos on actual military rations, that commercial package, uh, like I said, mainly geared towards kids, remains one of my most watched videos. And I do get comments on it still to this day saying, this is not space food. How could you prepare this in space? There's no way this, you know, basically stuff to that effect. And I never really thought I had any chance of getting real space food. But as it turns out, there's a company out there called, appropriately enough, Space Food. And you can find them at foodforspace.com. And they're selling what they're calling authentic astronaut food. I recently got this package from them, and you can see this actually comes from Russia. I decided to combine this with an unboxing along with the review because this box was just way too cool. It came from Russia, and you can see it's got the uh, customs label on here. It has the Russian postmark over here. Just uh, pretty neat stuff. And so space food sells stuff that is a lot more like what I eat and probably a lot of people think of as space food. Uh, you know, obviously they'll use probably some ready-to-eat stuff, some freeze-dried stuff, but I always think of space food as the uh, stuff like uh, food in tubes, and that is actually what they mainly deal in. And when you go to the website, you can find they have a bunch of different choices. You can buy the tubes individually, pick and choose whichever ones you want. Uh, currently they're about $9 each. And you can also get them in packages. They have a, a three-tube astronaut lunch, uh, they have a six-tube variety set, and they have a uh, deluxe set, which looks really interesting, but it's a bit out of my price range. And that one includes some canned items and some items uh, in vacuum-sealed plastic, too, along with the tubes. But Space Food sent me this, and I'm going to go ahead and open this up, because I'm not actually sure what's in here. I, I'm kind of hoping it's going to be that six-tube uh, variety pack, but I don't actually know. And I'm also not sure the best way to open this box here is... Yeah, here we go. All right, let's see what space food is going to be reviewed. Wow, this is this is pretty cool. A lot different than that um, commercially packaged astronaut food and the uh, astronaut ice cream. Yeah, we do have the six tubes, and they come. It's kind of nice how they come in this little box here, and it and it perfectly fits in there. Uh, and they come in these neat little triangular boxes, individually boxed in these things. And let's see what we have. Okay, luckily, uh, in addition to having everything in Russian, I think basically everything on here is in Russian except for... Luckily, they do have back... Let me tell you uh, what it is in English. We have borscht, rasselnik, cottage cheese with black currant puree, meat puree, and that sounds like a classic uh, tube food, meat puree. Here is cottage cheese with sea buckthorn puree. I'm not sure what that is. And pork with vegetables. So that's a, that's a pretty good variety here of um, Russian type dishes. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these and try them out. Alright, so this is pretty much my spaciest plate. It seems like the uh, best one to use for this. 
And before we really get into this, I did want to say one thing that's nice to know is that this stuff is indeed approved by space. I like this little sticker they have on here too for sealing it. So a few bits of information from the Space Food website. They say that this is 100% authentic product. The same food was used by the ISS and Mir space station before 2000. Quality guaranteed. The food is produced by FGUP Bez, the manufacturer and supplier for food on the ISS. Ready to use, require no preparation, and are packed with nutrition. Long shelf life, 12 plus months without refrigeration. So you can see that they are kind of similar to MREs and other military rations in that they're ready to eat and they're shelf stable and have a pretty long shelf life. In a case it's not cool enough that this is space food, they even add a little bit of intrigue with this part here. All items are produced carefully in the state-owned plant FGUP Bez, specializing in producing the best food for special and secret missions, such as space flights, for special forces, in the Ministry of Emergency Situations. I think that's pretty cool. And here are the uh, directions for use. I'm guessing because these are metal tubes, that's what the first one refers to. Don't preheat in a microwave oven. On the ISS, you can use a special heater for tubes and cans. On Earth, you can put it in hot water for 5 to 7 minutes, or put it on a warm water heating battery for 10 to 12 minutes, or put it on a car heater for 10 minutes, or eat it without heating it at all. It's delicious. So that's what we're going to find out next, if it's really delicious. Why don't we start off with traditional Russian dish, borscht. I believe this is a, uh, a soup made with uh, beets. That's uh, generally what it is anyway. Uh, I'm sure there's other kinds, other varieties. If you can read this, you probably know a lot more than I do. Looks like it's 115 grams. I'm guessing that's what that says. There's the uh, heating instructions. Yeah, no idea what that says. Let's see, what do we have here? Looks like this must be uh, Best Buy date. Looks like uh, July 21st, I think that's a... I'm not sure what that is here, but it's July 20-something, 20 2017. Yeah, this one's a little bit clearer. July 21st, 2017. Got our first two. And here is your tube of space food. Looking not all that much different from a tube of toothpaste. And of course the idea of food in tubes isn't really anything, well obviously it's not anything new because they've been using it since the 60s for space food, but it's not limited to space food. Um, you can find all kinds of spreads and other things in tubes. And there is stuff like um, this callus here. This is from Ikea. And uh, this is creamed smoke roe. And they also make a uh, salmon paste, which is very good. But of course it's not space food. That's what we're really interested in. And here's some uh, information on here, which I can't read. But I'm guessing that's ingredients. And some other stuff here. Hopefully this will mean something to somebody. And let's check it out. So this is one of the ones that has the uh, seal tube and the cap has a little a little pointy thing in there so you can puncture that. Whoa. It smells like soup. Seems to be a little bit liquidy. Let me see what... Uh... Hey, look at this. This is our borscht. Put a little bit on here. It smells good. It actually smells like um like a minestrone kind of a vegetable soup sort of a thing. Let me try that out. Yeah, that's surprisingly good. Something that just came out of a tube and basically just tastes like a, a vegetable soup. Not very not very much like um, a beet flavor, but uh, certainly not bad. Let's try out this Rasselnick. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but if I'm not, I'm sorry. And this is a um, another traditional Russian soup based on uh, pickled cucumbers, I believe. Let's try it 
try this one out. It's weird, you kind of expect it to be some kind of a creamed thing, but basically it just came out as soup. It smells very, very similar. It's a bit more creamy. Okay, that's kind of clumpy. You can see it's not just a, a, a paste or cream, it is uh, and it's like food. It's like these green, yeah, the greenish things must be the pickles. The uh, pickled cucumbers are just plain pickles. That's an interesting flavor. Um, hmm, I guess you could say it tastes, uh, tastes Russian. It's not bad. It's a little different, probably an acquired taste, but uh, very impressive that it's just like food that comes right out of a tube. Um, you know, I'm actually gonna save the meat puree because I love the sound of that. Pork with vegetables, that's pretty universal. Try all of these cold and then I'll probably, um, I'll probably heat them up a little bit too and see if they're any different. Pork with vegetables and his, I'm um, guessing your ingredients. Another information. Smells very similar to the uh, the borscht, actually. It's kind of like a uh, vegetable soup sort of a thing. It smells like the borscht with some uh, like some green pepper in it. I'm guessing it must be one of the vegetables. Yeah, it's a strong flavor of of pepper, like a, a green pepper. Um. Not really tasting pork so much, but uh, it does seem it's kind of like a, a meat-based version of the borscht. Seems like a good way to describe it. And it is chunky. Like I said, this isn't complete paste, like um, just straight up paste. It does have, uh, it's a bit more like food. Meat puree. We'll see how pasty this one is. Well, I'm good so far. I wouldn't uh, complain if I had to eat these in space. I'd certainly rather do that than starve. And in fact, I uh, don't think it'd be that bad to eat these if I was out uh, in an emergency situation or camping or whatnot. It's a, a tube, pretty easy to carry, pretty easy to uh, store. And it is food. So this is the meat puree. I'm guessing this is going to tell you what kind of meat is in here. The Russian readers will be able to uh, inform us, I'm sure. And once again, it smells kind of like a uh, vegetable soup. Kind of smells like a like an MRE pasta-based sort of a thing. Oh, this is a little bit runny here. Whoa, it's a lot runny. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to come out. Maybe it's not as pureed as they said. Wow. Try to open it up a little bit more. Okay, that should be better. Nope. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo. I don't even want to say what that seemed like it was coming out, but uh, here's our meat puree. That was an odd presentation there, but I have a feeling this is going to be my favorite one so far, uh, partially because I'm not a vegetarian, i.e. I like meat. Yeah, it tastes like, um, like a, a ground beef uh, MRE type of a dish. Not much to look at. But it tastes good. It tastes like a bolognese sauce that you put on spaghetti. That's a good way to describe it. It has some, somewhat of a tomato kind of flavor. A lot of flavor from the uh, ground beef. I don't know if there's other kind of meats in here, but that's what it tastes to me. Spaghetti sauce. Good, good, good spaghetti sauce. All right, that's gonna leave us with our, um, I don't know if you would call these desserts or sides, but uh, cottage cheese with sea buckthorn puree. 
It's funny that this is both uh, cottage cheese based instead of just having um, uh, like a black currant puree or something. Uh, cottage cheese isn't really my thing, but uh, this should be should be interesting. simpler list of ingredients there. It smells kind of sweet. Oh, another one that wants to spew out of here. Ugh. It's, uh, that's kind of weird. Alright, I can't say that I know what buckthorn is. I'll look it up, but uh... Here's the paste and the juice. Oh, that's interesting. It definitely tastes the cottage cheese. And it tastes kind of like a um, some sort of a jam. This is the uh, strangest taste so far, but I'm sure it's a traditional Russian delicacy. It's just um, not something I'm used to. It has, uh, definitely has the cheesiness to it. I know it's cottage cheese, but it has um, some kind of a cheese flavor to it. And, um, and there's some sweetness too. Interesting. Try that on a cracker too. And then finally we have cottage cheese with black currant puree. Sounds a little bit more relatable. What's your information on this one? Very similar smell, maybe a little bit sweeter, and also mm, pretty juicy. Wow, that doesn't want to come out at all. This could be, uh, no, no, it's just uh, the most paste-like one we've seen so far. Oh, there's, there's more juice in there. I don't know if these could, could use some kneading before they're opened. It looks like tuna fish. It looks a lot like tuna fish in water, but obviously it's not. Very similar to the last one, maybe maybe a little bit sweeter. And there's your Russian tubed space foods. Not necessarily the most appetizing looking thing, but um, overall they taste, taste quite good. And it's uh, certainly novelty. It's something really cool to think that you're eating food out of tubes. If the idea of that grosses you out, then you might not be interested. But for anybody that is interested, head over to the website and check them out. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to retry some of these heated up. All right, so I'm just going to submerge the four main dish type things in some hot water. And just give those a few minutes to warm up. I'm hoping that the fact that I've already opened these isn't going to be a problem and then I, the water isn't going to sneak in there. Obviously, when you first get these, they're sealed and wouldn't be any problem with immersing them in water. Alright, so I heated everything up and uh, I did try it right out of the tube when it came up because I knew it was going to take a while to get this all set up. And like it is with most uh, rations and most um, prepared foods, even though it's ready to eat, it's definitely better heated if you can get it heated. Each of the four that I heated up were uh, a little bit on the better side heated than they were cold. And obviously, as you can see, I decided to put them on crackers for my last test, uh, my last taste test. Uh, the borscht is the one that is least likely to uh, be put on a cracker uh, because it's um, it's the one that's most like a soup, so it's pretty um, pretty liquidy. But that's good, and it's it's obviously it's a classic Russian dish. The rasselnik, I've never actually heard of it before, but apparently this is a classic Russian dish too. And I think you can kind of see some of the green in there. Those would be the pickles, the pickled cucumbers, and this is a, has a gives it a distinct taste. It was definitely similar to the borscht, but the pickles do give it its own certain unique quality. It's definitely interesting. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of going from my least favorite to my favorites. Uh, pork the vegetables. That one was good. Not really a lot of pork flavor per se. Uh, and general vegetables. I can see some red in there. A little bit of green. 
but there's definitely a strong flavor of uh, green pepper, and that kind of sets that apart from the other ones. And I do have to say that my favorite of these is the uh, meat puree. Not really the most advertising sounding name, meat puree, just pureed meat. But I guess it's uh, probably because it's the most familiar seeming. Like I said, it's like a bolognese sauce for uh, spaghetti, for pasta. Basically, it's just like a, a really good meat sauce. I mean, I actually wouldn't mind putting this over pasta. The rasselnick and the borscht, they're they're great, but they're... Uh, and it's what's cool about them is it's neat getting some typical Russian fare, but obviously I'm not really familiar with those kind of things. This just really is very familiar to me. Yeah, it's very good. It really is good. Now, I would be curious to know if there is tomato in this, if it's a tomato-based kind of a sauce that it's in. And that leads us with the... Uh, Cottage cheese with sea buckthorn puree, which, as I said, I'm not really sure what that is. And these two obviously lend themselves probably best to the crackers. And it is good. Like as I said, you, you do get the, the taste of cheese and some sweetness from whatever the sea buckthorn is. And in this case, the uh, blackcurrant, which is a bit more familiar to me. Not too much of a difference between the two. It's definitely an interesting taste. And the last thing to say that it was really cool trying out some of this real space food, or much more real than the other space foods that I've tried out in the past. And if you're interested in this and want to try any out, just go to foodforspace.com and uh, get some of this stuff direct from Russia. Thank you for watching. Nope. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo!